topic, uh, mass medication distribution, is something that um, the health department uh, has been very instrumental in, in developing, um, not only locally, but at a state level and also a national level. Sorry. Um, so at any rate, <clears throat> so let me just say, like to just clarify the role of the health department, describe the federal assets as far as, as medical uh, mass distribution of medications and discussing your role and how you can help. So the public health across the nation, not just here in Queen Anne's County, not just here in Maryland, but everywhere, we have been tasked with these 15 capabilities by the Centers for Disease Control um, and Health and Human Services to make our nation more resilient and our communities more resilient. One of those things is the one that's highlighted up there, medical countermeasure dispensing. So you might say to yourself, well, what exactly is that? And it's this dispensing of uh, medicines and therapeutics such as vaccines or antivirals or antibiotics to counteract public health emergencies, including but not limited to terrorist or biological attacks and uh, influenza or other disease outbreaks. The treatment would be dispensed to a large number of people in a short amount of time. One of the things that we particularly focus on is anthrax and an anthrax attack. Um, so would we have enough medication here in the county to medicate almost 50,000 people here in the county? Well, no, we wouldn't. And would we have enough in the state? No, we wouldn't. So we would need to request what we have uh, uh, no, come lovingly known as the uh, strategic national stockpile. This, a large stockpile of medicine and medis medical supplies, They're, it's managed by the Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, and it's used to protect the American public, or it would be. It is ready to be used during a public health emergency severe enough to cause local health supplies to run out. And if you want to know everything you could ever possibly want to know about the SNS, the Strategic National Stockpile, is at the CDC website. So what are the, the possible reasons that we might need it? For a bioterrorist attack with anthrax, if there was a pandemic of uh, influenza, if there was an outbreak of smallpox. And do you have any idea how many cases of smallpox we'd need to have to have an emergency? One. Just one. Um, and it's also available for some natural disasters, as you can see pictured there. So why would a pod be activated? And you might say, well, what the heck is a pod? It's a point of distribution. So usually it would be set up where we would be passing out medication to prevent disease in those people who have been exposed to an infection but who are not yet sick, uh, an antiviral or a vaccine would be uh, distributed, possibly to treat an infectious disease or to treat persons exposed to a biological agent such as anthrax spores. And the treatment then offered would be limited to particular medications. Uh, it says a medication. but or specific, but it would be likely anthrax, cipro, ciprofloxacin, and doxycycline would be the two biggest ones that we would use. So then what, you know, what does public health need to do? Well, we need to medicate the population of the county. And you might think, well, okay, no problem, we could do that, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> be kind of difficult. Um, we'd have to educate the community how to take their medication, what the next steps would be to, you know, and how to stay healthy. So there are lots of things that we would do. We would certainly get that information out in a variety of ways as far as um, TV, radio, internet, all kinds of information would be out there in the newspapers, um, hopefully that people would be able to um, survive. So some of the, the things that happen with um, passing out medications is the state has set up a certain uh, standards. And so medications are free. So these medicines would be free. Nobody would have to pay for anything. There would be no residency requirement to receive the meds. You show up at our pod, you get the meds. 
household representatives would be able to pick up for their entire household. And actually, we there would be situations. If we didn't have to touch every single person, i.e., we wouldn't have to give them a vaccine, every single person, then head of household is what we would request to come to the pods to pick up, you know, your little bag of medicines for your family. Um, and everyone who is exposed to uh, whatever is entitled to medication. So those are just some basic standards. So there are open or public pods. Um, it's a medic medication dispensing clinic, essentially, for the general public, usually set up in a school or, or other large building, or other large facility. It's run by a team of medical and non-medically trained personnel. And individuals go through different stations to get their medications. Um, and a couple of different ways we do it is either a walk-through or a drive-up, drive-through type of a uh, scenario. We also have things that we call closed or private pods. They're generally a little bit smaller, like we could set up a, a pod um, here for the, the fire department so that they could medicate their own people and their families of their own people. Okay? They're usually hosted by businesses, agencies, or healthcare facilities. Um, and, it, and usually it's only in a non-medical model that we would use this. Um, so, in a non-medical model, the regulations for dispensing medicines are temporarily relaxed. So, you know, typically nurses even wouldn't be dispensing meds. Um, but ev even with, with a non-medical model, it would even be where we could have a group of individuals that weren't medical at all that would be dispensing meds because they would, people would be filling out forms and it would be very simple so that there wouldn't be much chance of um, error. Um, so then the staff would receive meds for themselves and for their family members. And uh, one of the examples that I have here for a self-dispensing site would be like a hospital. Okay, they would get their medications and then dispense it to their themselves staff. So medical versus a non-medical situation um, or a pod. A medical pod, you would have thorough screening of the individuals that would come through. You would have professional staff doing the dispensing of the medication. There would be documentation, fairly thorough documentation on, on you know, the lot number, the, you know, the site that you're giving it, like you would like for a flu vaccine uh, clinic. There would be patient tracking, and we might require you to sign a release and have a signature, and the process is generally slower. A non-medical, there's very minimal screening, like uh, do you have any allergies, are you eight or are you pregnant, and you know, stuff like that, really, really simple. Few or no medically trained staff are needed to dispense it. There's minimal documentation. There's little or no patient tracking. Little patient tracking might be uh, via your uh, zip code. Uh, we wouldn't require a signature for release, and the object is to get the medicine and the people as fast as possible. This is um, actually a form that was developed oops, by the uh, City's Readiness Initiative Group uh, of the Baltimore Statistical Area, the BSA, or the MSA, Metropolitan Statistical Area. Um, and it, as you can see, uh, not really, really well, but it says, you know, in the first column you're listing everybody that you're going to pick up medicines for, and then you answer these questions, A, B, and C. So, uh, is your household member pregnant, breastfeeding, eight years of age, or under? So, pretty easy, yes or no there. Is the household member allergic to or shouldn't take any of the following medicines? And, and it's a short list, and then, uh, Column C is also another short list of allergies, yes or no. So basically, you look at the, the shaded area in the upper right-hand corner, and it's either no, 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 or no, no, yes. Or at any rate, be that as it may, you circle the one area, and then at the bottom it says, what medication do you get? It's either doxycipro or other. And the other is there because if at the time this, God forbid, sort of thing would happen, uh, the FDA would likely, at that point in time, determine that there is an option for people who are allergic to doxycipro 
then we would have the other. So, so that's why that's there. But anyway, as you can see, it would be pretty simple. Um, so at the bottom, it's tallied up. You get your little bag of medicines, and you go home, and you take it to your, your family. And perhaps even your neighbor who can't, can't come in because they're in a wheelchair. So we would ask that people um, help their neighbors out at that time as well. So the main goal of mass distribution is to get medicine or vaccine to the public quickly and safely, and that about wraps things up for this discussion. So here's just a, a couple of samples of pod layouts. Um, you know, we at the health department, and not only here in Queen Anne's, but across the state and across the country, we've developed these little little schematics for pods, how they could look and how you how uh, how to move people. You know, we've we've looked at how Disney moves people. Uh, you know, things like that. Here's uh, another example of of uh, you know the Cipro Doxy and the Peds and Needs line there. And then uh, this is actually um, a drive-through setup that, that we did here in Queen Anne's County um, at the Queen Anne's County High School where we actually had people driving around the school. And uh, at the far end, at the top there, um, people would drive up and we'd give them their flu shots and then they'd be on their merry way. So it, it does work and it's pretty amazing. People are always amazed that we can do this. Um, so we, we've been working on this. We, collectively, all of public health has been working on trying to um, improve the system over the last many, many years to, to see about uh, how, we could, how we could make this better if we had to do something of this nature. So that's basically it. Oh, yeah, these are just a few shots of some exercises. This, uh, the one in the upper left was uh, actually an exercise uh, that we held at Ken Island High School, a mass distribution exercise. Uh, the one on the upper right was actually in 2004 when we had a shortage of uh, influenza vaccine. We had people that were actually lined up, wrapped around our building, and started at 4 o'clock in the morning that they came to an 8 o'clock clinic.